Hello everyone, welcome to Perspective. Thank you for signing up for my class. I want to get started here with uh, showing you a little bit of my work. Uh, a lot of what you're going to see is uh, some pretty pretty advanced stuff. Um, you know, I, I pretty much usually work with uh, a grid underneath. Uh, every, every, every piece that you guys do is going to be a little bit different and going to have a uh, slightly different demand. So there's a slightly different process and you know, I'll show you guys that in a, in a little bit. Uh, some of how, uh, maybe some more specifics of how I, I deal with this. Uh, but for now, just sit back and relax and enjoy the slideshow. Uh, I always find it important to kind of uh, show everyone, you know, some, some previous work. Uh, I know when I was in school, it's always uh, kind of nice to see uh, what the instructors have done. Uh, so it kind of gives you a, a good gauge on, uh, you know, what you have in store. So anyways, let's get started. Um, this is a uh, some Robotech stuff I've been doing. Uh, I was a kid of the 80s. So I really loved that series, uh, Macross, if you will, uh, if you're you know, in, in Japan. Uh, so this is, you know, I don't, I don't see a whole lot of people doing it, so I'm, I'm taking on a personal project, and uh, this is where the Zentradi are invading, and uh, Earth, and the SDF one down here, blowing away this, you know, whatever it is. Um, still a work in progress, a lot of, a lot of stuff to be done, uh, sorting out the composition and so forth, uh, which I'll talk about in the Q&As. Uh, this is another shot. This is where uh, we actually see this super dimensional alien fortress, uh, you know, in this city that's been built up around it and so forth. Again, I'm still messing with these compositions. Um, this one, again, like uh, that grid I mentioned, here it is. Uh, so I kind of started off with this. I mean, I don't stick to it exactly, uh, and you can notice I've curved this stuff. Uh, again, over time, you'll... Uh, you know, actually, I'm, I'm not going to ad address too much of this distorted, uh, warped perspective. Um, you know, for this class, I'm pretty much going to make sure that uh, you guys really understand the basics. So uh, this is just a modification of that. Uh, your lines will be straight in class, but when you guys start getting a little bit more excited uh, and towards the end of the class, uh, you, can, you can start messing around with this kind of stuff. But we'll, we'll get to it in due time. Again, this is more more advanced stuff that you're kind of looking at. Uh, so I worked on Black Dynamite uh, for uh, it's an adult, adult Swim show in the states. Uh, it was based off of a, a flick in 2009, like this black exploitation uh, kind of genre. Uh, it's really fun to do. So uh, you know, this is like an office for this is Black Dynamite's office actually. And then this is uh, the orphanage. This is uh, a a place for whores and orphans. And uh, this is like the entry doorway. Uh, and this is a really forced perspective. Uh, that was the style of the show as well. So um, three point is usually reserved for, you know, buildings. If we're looking up at them or looking down. Uh, idea, the idea is like Black Dynamite's like standing here. Because he's got an afro, so that's why I'm drawing this shape. And he's, he's like a really tall dude, so he's kind of looking down. Uh, so it's really, again, like in this show... Part of the style was to really push, uh, push that dynamic. Uh, so this one's a little bit of a flatter perspective. This one's a little bit more, a lot more straightforward. You know, my grid is pretty straight on this one. Uh, and part of the style is also to have this organic quality. And so, you know, I, I don't have too many, you know, these lines. If you, if I held shift to make this perfect, you, you'll see it be a little bit. You know, not perfectly straight. Again, that's just part of the style of the show. Uh, something that, as you guys, you know, develop as artists, uh, you want to be aware of. Uh, this is Paul Mooney's Jungle Room. <laughs> uh, so there's a lot of weird creatures here. You know, little parakeets. You know, all all taxonomy. Uh, that's just the uh, what was uh, uh, this char particular character's uh, kind of living room, or so to speak. Here's a little lampshade made out of a the last dodo. Uh, so I like to sneak little tricks, uh, little little story moments like that whenever I can. I always find it fun. Uh, this is Black Dynamite's car. Uh, and I didn't really design this. Uh, actually, this wasn't part of my design. This already existed. There was a shot where we're looking this way, and Black Dynamite's driving. And so they never established the design of the front. So that's my job to make sure this looks like what already existed in the past but provide this new uh, this new set over here uh, this new design uh, you know what this looks like exactly so this was a lot of fun trying to again interpret 
<laughs> what this would look like, but having to include uh, what we have over here. Uh, this is the exterior of the orphanage, so this is the establishing basically. Uh, this went through quite a bit of iterations actually, uh, but still really fun to do. Uh, again, this one, the perspective on this one's a little bit more obvious as well. Uh, so this one wasn't too, too stylized. Here's a set of broken TVs. Uh, Black Dynamite gets his face thrown into this, <laughs> this display. And, and this one's fun. So uh, I'm going to encourage you guys to, at some point, probably to, you know, we basically have a one point. This is a very simple system. And it's a lot more interesting to have these boxes and these TVs in other perspective systems, even though it's a one point. Uh, again, slightly advanced stuff, but. Uh, it just really depends on how you arrange things. Having a good understanding of the fundamentals, you can start to, and I wouldn't even say it's a breaking of a rule. Uh, there's still, there's still, you know, I don't really even like using the term rules. Uh, perspective is a tool, and so you can use it as you please. Uh, that includes altering it. Uh, so I definitely encourage that whenever possible. Another one point perspective, just a lot of fun things in this room. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this is Michael Jackson's mansion, actually. And uh, this is. Uh, cream corn room that he's he's got set up for him. Uh, this one is arguably a three-point perspective. Really simple. You can hardly tell. You know, this background is doing something like that. Uh, but a lot of the a lot of what I'm doing to make it interesting is just sorting out all these crazy cables. Another basic one-point perspective. Uh, slightly cheated. Right? Kind of leaning it up a little bit with some convergence. So again, just basic, um, uh, I'm basically just riffing off of, again, existing systems. So once once more, understanding the fundamentals, you can really, really get into uh, tweaking it just a little bit to get a slightly different look. This is a Russian space uh, uh, rocket from episode four, I believe. And here's a, a look inside the Russian space station. Again, this is it's kind of just a one point perspective, uh, perhaps just kind of you know tilting it this way a little bit, dutching the camera, but otherwise it, it's pretty strictly you know one point. I think this is another shot of that space station uh, so here's the control room again, this one is just tilted this way, but otherwise pretty formal one point with the I believe the vanishing point should be somewhere over there. This is a escape capsule. Uh, so arguably this also is a one point. Probably happening right here. So these are obvious cues. Again, a little bit bent. You know, just because that's the style of the show. Uh, this is what they're supposed to look like colored. They have this watercolor texture here. Uh, I was layout artist for the show, so I, I didn't do any color. I was pretty much working black and white for over a year. Uh, but this is pretty much what it's supposed to look like. Uh, you know, final. So I got to do some cars. Very cool. Very perspective heavy. Uh, again, just another one point. A uh, lot of one points uh, in this show. They're, they're pretty effective, actually, uh, in describing a lot of things. So here's the front of the car. Some piston actions, uh, kind of like uh, the Fast and Furious, I guess, where they <laughs> go inside the motor. Uh, so that was fun to do. Uh, again, this is what it looks like colored. Uh, I didn't color this. This is uh, Patrick Morgan was the uh, one of our background painters. Um, so he he colored this one. Uh, the previous color that you saw that was me. Um, again, uh, the style of the show. You know, you shouldn't be able to tell the style difference because it is one single style, even though two different people are doing it. Uh, so that's one of those uh, professional things that uh, you should be aware aware of. Especially if you guys want to get into feature animation or TV animation. Uh, understanding style is important. Once it's been established, you know, it may not necessarily be your own. And you're going to have to be able to you know, pretty, much, pretty much match it. That's uh, so another car. This is the Yakuza car. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm getting to do a, a couple of fun things by um, adding these little... 
you know, gauges and so forth and so forth uh, that break perspective a little bit. Uh, so stuff like that is always fun. The Statue of Liberty in New York. Uh, so this one includes a city skyline in the back. So this one's a pretty simple system as well. Uh, engine detail. Uh, a top view of the city. Uh, there's a community block party going on. So there's a lot, a lot of cool little, little things. Again, breaking perspective here, or trying to, just to make the scene a little bit more interesting. Uh, I always find it kind of boring when I see everything laid down on this grid. So if you put a box here, it does that. You know, it's always nice if you can have something. You know, because in life, you have a, a lot of this, this stuff happening. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that over time. Because uh, it does get a little bit tricky. Uh, so this is more of a two-point going this way. So this is Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles, a uh, very, very famous place in L.A., if, you, if you've ever been here. And uh, Elvis is singing here, so this is like his Mercedes, and everyone's trying to, trying to line up in the windows and check out what's going on. Uh, and then this is, uh, there's, a, there's actually a bomb over here. <laughs> so we're looking down on L.A., uh, and we're inside a B, B-29 bomber, I believe. Uh, this is uh, the Richard Nixon episode, so this is inside of a helicopter, Sikorsky helicopter. Uh, yeah, so again, pretty straightforward. This is also a one point. Uh, again, as you can tell, like there's a lot of one point perspectives in here. Uh, a lot of it is just shape design, how you get all these things to work. Uh, that's going to make your shot interesting, not, not the perspective system itself. I sort of need to emphasize that. So here's a, I think this is like a flashback to a basketball game or something like that. This is a jungle. Uh, this, not a lot of perspective, not a lot of mathematical perspective can be used. Uh, you know, except maybe since these are man-made wooden boards. You know, I might, I might want to indicate that, you know, I have a horizon down here. But otherwise, a lot of this stuff is kind of made up. And so there's other principles that we'll talk about to, to handle these kinds of scenes. Uh, because mathematical perspective in this, in this sense uh, isn't going to work so well. Same thing over here. With the more man-made architectural elements, we can use mathematical perspective. But these other atmospheric elements, you're going to you're gonna have to use some other tricks. Uh, this is outside the orphanage again. Uh, once more, this is what it looks like in color, kind of that watercolor texture. So this limo kind of pulls up, and uh, there's, there's a frog character that's in there, uh, which you'll see in a moment. Uh, so the perspective system here is doing something like that. And again, I'm, I'm kind of just freehanding this area over here. Uh, here's that frog character, Curtis the Frog. <laughs> uh, so he's the... That character in that limo over here. Now that's not in there because that's that's for animation. So this has a perspective system as well. This one's pretty straightforward. Again, I'm trying to make it look a little bit more epic, so I'm using a three point on purpose because I want I'm just I'm using that for the purpose of making him look grand over here. And then this is a reverse view. We're looking down, we're looking down. So there's a character over here. And I want to make him feel powerless or pathetic, and so having a shot like this. And really, the storyboards, the sports storyboard artist established a shot. I'm just flushing this out with design. And this is a simple gas station. There's supposed to be a. I forget how it works exactly. There's like a a nozzle, a gas nozzle like that. I think there's a handle like this. Uh, once more, this is what it looks like painted. Uh, this is my, my paint and my design as well. Again, just missing that animated element over there. Okay, lastly we end up with this image. This one's actually a full Photoshop file, so I kind of want to walk you guys through this a little bit. Uh, that perspective grid, again, like I generally set something up like this in the beginning. And then if I remove all this line art, uh, I always start with a rough sketch like this. So uh, Having a grid underneath I should just move this down here. Uh, so this is pretty much how I start. You know, I start it off. I'll, I'll probably tone this grid down. But that gives me a guide so like when I start 
drawing and placing buildings. You know, if I had more over here. You know, allows me to place things in perspective very accurately. Uh, and yes, again, uh, advanced technique. I'm, I'm kind of bending this over here to kind of simulate um, the angle of a lens. But again, uh, for the most part, you guys will be using straight lines. Uh, you know, I'm going to get you guys to really understand these systems really, really well uh, before we start, you know, tweaking and adding style and flair. You want a solid foundation and allow you to do all this crazy stuff. Uh, like some of the paintings you see in the beginning, uh, you know, it requires a very solid uh, foundation to, to be able to start, you know, tweaking things. Like this building, again, interest. To add interest, I want... Uh, I want this to break the perspective system, but it still has to feel like it's going, it's landing on the same horizon, just a lot farther away. That's how you get, that's how you generally get these things to, to work out. And then uh, once I have a rough, I pretty much tone this down. And then I, I put a layer on top of everything. Uh, so this is the final. I think I've left out some trees and foam poles or something. Uh, maybe the art director is like, we don't need it. Uh, I for, forget what it is exactly. And, and we basically have the final over here. Uh, so that's my work. I uh, hope you've enjoyed that slideshow. So we'll just go ahead and get started with the class. Many of you guys have probably dealt with perspective at some point in your lives. Um, I mean, whether you've taken a class in the past, you know, like in high school or you know, uh, junior college level uh, or whatnot, uh, you're probably familiar with a lot of concepts. So. Uh, before I dive into uh, you know crazier techniques uh, and you know construction and all that, uh, I think it's a good idea to probably review uh, you know perspective how it works. And you guys are probably familiar with most systems, uh, you know, starting with one point perspective, right? Uh, so in this setup, we have a horizon over here, uh, which is pretty much the the far as the eye can see, right? And uh, we have our one vanishing point in this system and uh, you know in general if we would draw a box it's probably gonna look like this uh, so there's a couple of things that uh, you wanna you wanna realize uh, in this system uh, horizontals are gonna always be perfectly horizontal and verticals are always perfectly vertical uh, so if we start to see a, a box in, in kind of this shape right or at least a square over here. Uh, we're going to be pretty good. And this is really loose. Um, but if your box starts to do something like this, you know, where this starts veering towards a vanishing point, uh, we're no longer in this one-point system. Uh, you're basically, basically in, in a two-point system, even though it's slight. Uh, so, you know, in this system, you know, watch out for those things. Uh, in two-point perspective, we we basically have our same horizon, only there's two vanishing points. So vanishing point one, vanishing point two. Uh, and the only thing you really need to understand, well, significantly in this system, is that the verticals are perfectly vertical. Uh, so if we have a you know a straight line that goes up and down, is always going to be perfect. Uh, and then the other points basically go to you know a either one or two one of two vanishing points uh, the third system uh, actually there's actually more than one there's actually more than the three systems uh, four point uh, infinite amount of points to be honest but uh, you know like I'll save that uh, for down the road that that gets to be more advanced most most things you're gonna do is probably gonna end up being two point um, and personally I do a lot of, of one point I've realized uh, because it's it's you know it's a really simple system in three point, you now have three vanishing points. Uh, so your first one, your second one, uh, and then your third one down here. Uh, I mean, we can always, uh, we can always, you know, do this sort of thing where it's not just a bird's eye, but it's like a looking up at a skyscraper or something. Uh, everything's upside down, obviously, but uh, again, like the the third point is just kind of there for uh, a corner. Uh, I've drawn a sketch here. Uh, to help better understand this. So here's here's you, the viewer. Uh, you're also known as the station point, to be technical about it. And this is the picture plane, uh, which is arguably basically infinite. I mean, this can go as, I don't know, as large as your piece of paper can be. Digitally, I mean, as large as your computer can handle without 
frying itself basically. Uh, so that's a constantly changing size. It's also, you know, it can represent your sheet of paper as well. You know, your uh, PP can also stand for piece of paper, I suppose, uh, aka your picture plane. So in one point, again, uh, this diagram, uh, we look at it, you know, from, from our point of view, our perspective, it's going to look, look like this. Uh, and again, this box is facing uh, forward in front of us. In two point, uh, we're basically looking at the corner now over here. Uh, so representative uh, in your you know POV, it's going to look pretty much like this. And in three point, we're basically looking at a corner of an object. And so now your picture plane, you're going to kind of you know get something like this. Uh, so that's basically how the the three systems pretty much uh, pretty much work. Uh, your uh, it's kind of your orientation, uh, I suppose. Uh, if you know if you're looking for you know kind of a representation of how that operates. So moving along. Uh, what I want to get into is uh, the cone of vision. Uh, this is really important. Uh, I'm going to plot it out here, you know, starting with a horizon. And uh, the thing we have to know about the cone of vision is basically, with us, the observer, um, you know, we, you know, humans basically see uh, in a, you know, basically a cone. That's why they call it cone of vision, and it's pretty much a circle that exists like this. And this is a 60 degrees uh, angle. And so the, the thing about this is everything outside of here is going to be in distortion. Everything inside of this circle is going to look pretty good. Uh, that pretty much starts entering our peripheral vision. And uh, again, uh, in our peripheral, things are going to be distorted. Uh, you know, shapes aren't going to line up, ellipses aren't going to work, uh, things like that. And so the way we go about setting that up, again, starting with the horizon, the next thing we're going to need is, uh, again, us the viewer, the station point, uh, represented by us. Uh, there's a weird thing that happens I'm going to explain really quickly. Um, this is basically our picture plane over here, right? Now, this is what we're looking at. It's pretty much our uh, point of view. Uh, the station point is us, the observer, but I mean, uh, we're basically looking down on us. And so this would be your shoulders, your head, I, don't know, I guess a person's nose or something like that. Uh, so that's basically us looking down. Uh, and then uh, there's, a, there's a technique that you know, I don't want to get into. It's a drafting technique. Uh, I never, ever designed this way, but the idea is like if we kind of drew a plan view of a house or something like that. You know, this is the perspective angle that we would want. You know, then and then from here our eyes would see certain points, certain corners, you know, and that could be translated up and then into the perspective system and and all this crazy stuff. Again, I don't want to get into that. That's very, uh, you know, I don't, I don't design that way. Again, I'll be honest with you guys. So uh, that's basically the idea. And I, I just brought that up so that we understand uh, we're we're in top view over here, and whereas this is in our actually plane of vision. Uh, and then the next step in setting this up is, whoops, uh, we have a 90 degree. Uh, we have a 90 degree. Uh, angle basically this this shape over here and by the way this is uh this is setting up for two point perspective and i'm not gonna really bother setting one up for one point because in my opinion the cone of vision is sort of irrelevant it's just it's just useless uh when we do uh, when we do one point uh because you can really go it's you know you can really shrink this thing and uh, and grow it in a one point, but it's because we only have one uh, one point, you know, one vanishing point. It's it's sort of irrelevant. So you're going to get some kind of distortion anyways. So going forward from here, again, this being a 90 degree angle, I mean, you can kind of do whatever you want with this. You know, if you did something like this, uh, you just have to change your station point. Your center, you know, your station point basically becomes here now. Uh, so there's a number of ways to achieve this. Uh, so your center of vision actually comes up right over here. 
And again, we come up with this uh, 90 degree sort of thing. And that basically establishes our, our vanishing points. You have vanishing point one, vanishing point two. Uh, whether this is one or that's two, doesn't really matter. And then this cone, this is 60 degrees, very specific. And then where it meets the horizon over here, we basically have our cone of vision. Uh, so once again, everything, everything outside of this is going to be in distortion land, and it's not going to look proper. It's going to be very, very skewed. Uh, everything inside of here is going to going to look relatively good. Uh, so let me dunk a sheet of white paper over here, and let me draw some stuff. So uh, if we can track, you know, these construction lines back to vanishing points, uh, we basically have a cube, and what is observable over here is like this corner is an acute angle and what I mean by an acute angle is uh, this angle is less than 90 degrees uh, if your angle of your cube and it doesn't even have to be a perfect cube it can be a, a square if this is 90 degrees and greater basically you know you're out of the cone of vision so you don't really even need to construct this guy uh, but, uh, it, you know, I've noticed that if your corners, when you're just kind of freehanding a cube, perhaps, if we're, you know, doing something over here, you know, if, if that angle is very steep like that, you're outside of the cone of vision, you know, pretty automatically. But if you, if you keep that vanishing point far away, you know, and do this, this kind of a drawing, you know, you're going to be relatively in the cone of vision, you're going to be safe. Uh, so that's kind of a good guide, you know, by setting this up and then drawing stuff out here to to understand little areas like that. Uh, this is also outside, so again, this angle is probably 90 degrees and less. This is inside the cone of vision. So again, if we observe this, this is gonna, this corner over here is going to be uh, greater than 90 degrees. You know, 91 even is in the cone of vision and less distorted. This is also inside, so not distorted. Uh, so the way you want to set up your piece of paper, you know, you pretty much want to maximize your cone of vision, uh, you know, to be in it. Uh, and if you notice how far the vanishing points are, if this is a typical eight and a half by eleven, you know, these vanishing points are way off the page. Uh, even better, in my opinion, is if your piece of paper were like, like this. You know, this gives you a lot of leverage to move inside the system, you know, to draw your spaceship or whatnot. Uh, and your boxes will be less distorted. You know, any anywhere in here where you draw, it's probably going to work pretty, pretty, uh, you know, pretty well. And then we'll go over techniques as the weeks come along. Uh, sometimes I'll have a really large image in Photoshop so I can use these points. Uh, but to be honest, at some point, you guys are going to have to just get used to, you know, freehanding, eyeballing, making it feel. You know, if I were to draw a grid you know, freehand. You're just going to have to get used to, you know, feeling it out, making sure that you know, these go to a vanishing point, or at least it feels like it, you know, without having, without being able to see them, basically. Uh, and over the course, I'm going to actually push you guys to develop that feeling, too. So we're going to, we're going to do some drawings and some exercises without it, where we're going to kind of guess at it. Uh, and then there will be other exercises where we, we do use it. All right. So alternatively, if we to turn this stuff off, Again, different ways to set up the cone of vision. Uh, this 90 degree angle in red, and once again, that's the station point. Uh, and then where it meets the horizon, that's your center of vision. So from your point of view, that's the center uh, of the cone. So that's going to be important. Uh, again, our 60 degree cone based off of us, the observer. Uh, and then this circle, you know, again, it, it establishes uh, what is in, uh, you know, the area of, you know, excellence, I guess, where it's not distorted. Uh, alternatively, you know, if your angle were this far apart, you know, you can include uh, one of your one of your vanishing points in a two-point system. Uh, and I, I mess with this a lot sometimes because, like, you know, to I feel like you can get a really dynamic two-point perspective. You know, it's it's always cool to have just a sliver like this. You know, in a drawing. You know, like the side of a building or something, uh, because you know most times in two-point, I kind of see.